Hey, you guys. Okay. Wow. I know, right? My hair looks so different. Okay. It's not completely finished yet, but... Oh, sorry. Let me turn this down. I was watching this crappy movie on Netflix called Tammy. It's weird, but it's about to go off now. I usually, I usually don't watch stuff like that. I'm usually drawn to these mind-bending, mind-blowing. Oh, and sometimes I just need to gravitate towards something that's just, I don't know, down-to-earth, relatable, um, kind of silly, just like a brain cleanser for a moment because I'm always watching stuff that's just so serious or mind bending right before this i just finished the show called ratchet okay and if you've seen that you know what i'm talking about after that you kind of do need a brain cleaner you know um ratchet was good too and i'll get into that at another time anyway let me turn this crap down so um yeah it had been almost two years not quite two years. The last time I bleached my hair was probably around June or July of 2022. Shit, it has been two years. I was thinking maybe it was more towards the fall, but no, it was somewhere between May and July of 2022. So it had been two years of growth. And my hair had grown really long, like down my back. And I love my hair long. I love that length and everything. Looks great in a ponytail. But after a while, it just gets to be too long and the ends were really dead, about four or five inches on the ends. They were really dead. They really were craving a trim. Um, and um, also, when you're going to bleach, tackle a bleach job on your own, it is so much more difficult to do it with super long hair. So generally, I will cut it before I tackle the bleach and um, give it a trim, you know, get it get it healthier. But anyway, yeah, I've kept my hair blonde for many, many years. I had a professional doing it for, you know, almost 20 years, I, I think, and I was really regular with that for a while. And then times got hard, shit happens, life got kind of turned upside down for a few years. I just couldn't keep up with it anymore. I couldn't go to her. Um... You know, and so I ended up letting my hair go for a while back in, I guess, during the pandemic. The last time a professional that she did it for me, it was probably 2019. Somewhere around there was the very last time. And then I let it go because of the pandemic and all that. And, you know, I can deal with roots. I don't, I don't need to deal with roots because it's so much easier if you just, every couple months even... Let it grow out a little bit and touch it up. It is way less expensive, way less product, and way less risk, you know, with all these different funny tones. And you just don't have as much worry if you stay on top of it. But that's not always easy for us to do. Life happens and shit happens and sometimes we just can't. I never meant to let my hair grow for two years to grow back natural color, dark. I don't have a pretty brown hair. Some people have very nice tones and shades of darker hair, nice rich chocolates and different tones in their hair naturally, um, pretty dark browns and all that. I don't. My hair is just a sucky brown. I don't like it. And at this age, it had a lot of gray in it. So, no. <laughs> I've kept my hair like this for years. It's, it's for me, it's, it's my favorite. It's my fun place. It makes me feel more energetic. Um, it brightens my face up. It's just, I've always liked it a lot better. So I never meant to let it go, but yeah, during the pandemic, everybody was screwed, right? It's like, we didn't know whether we were coming or going. So yeah, I didn't, I think I let it go up until around July of 21. So shit, that was about a year and a half of growth at that point too. And then I was living with Chad at that time that we had an RV and he was gone to a program and I attempted to cut my long grown out hair where I didn't have as much root, but I had quite a bit cause it had grown. I didn't have as much as I had this time, but I had about a year 
year and a few months of growth and it was about halfway down it was all brown down to about right here and then these long bleach blonde root uh ends <laughs> and so i chopped most of that off where it was just brown left about yay height and then i proceeded to bleach it and that was the first time i had ever the professionals call it lightening not bleaching but that was the first time I had ever attempted to lighten my hair on my own with really good bleaching products and developer and everything, doing it right, putting protection in the bleach, strengthening, bonding or whatever, and using a good mask when it was over with and all that. The only experience I had ever had on my own was as a very young preteen and teenage girl back in the day trying to go from really dark to blonde stupidly with freaking boxes just going and getting a box dye and you can't do that with super dark hair you have to have professionals or you have to have lightener that you mix and you do it correctly you have to have really strong stuff to get your hair up this light from dark you just have to and so um okay where was i um, yeah, that was the only experience I had had before July of 2021. I, I don't know how old I was at that time. 47 now. I was in my 40s. So it was, you know, long time. I might as well say I had never, because I hadn't. I had never, ever attempted to do a really good bleach job on my own hair. Lightening with, with really good products and, you know, stuff like that. I had only done it as a kid. I had gone out and gotten those boxes. And of course, all you're ever going to get is orange or strawberry blonde, you know, with this orangey tones. That's all you're ever going to get with really dark hair. If you just go out and get a quick box, throw it on there and that you're done. It doesn't work like that. And I experimented with crap like sun in and shit that just, no. And then when I was in my early 20s, um, I started... It took me a while to find a regular hairdresser. I jumped from salon to salon for a while in my early 20s and would get them to bleach my hair up and then I wouldn't go back for a year or two, you know, and I would always have these roots and shit, half brown, half blonde. Um, and I jumped from a couple hairdressers for a few years and then around the age of 23 or 24, I met my more permanent hairdresser and she was fantastic and I started going to her and just never stopped for about 20 years she also cut my boys hair while they were growing up and she was great she really cared about hair she was very very knowledgeable she would explain processes to me along the way because I like to learn and um, yeah she really cared about the health and the integrity of of my hair um, and so, yeah, um, and you know, just life happens. And after 18 or 20 years, I was getting to the point where she would always keep it this beautiful, beautiful, um, platinum, creamy blonde. And, um, she knew a lot about the health of the hair. She knew a lot about toning, you know, getting it up just right. And she knew a lot about toning mixtures and all, the whole science, you know, it was just really great. But she, um, typically, depending on the length of the root, it would be a lot easier for her if I would go in there with, sh with roots to here rather than six or eight months of root down to here. She was going to have to use a lot more product. And at that point, you're always, gonna, even, even the professionals, it's always going to be difficult for them with that much root. The longer the root is, the longer the growth, it's always going to be difficult for even a professional to take you up more than three shades. Okay. And so it's quite the science. And, and actually I've learned quite a bit in the process. I really started buckling down and studying more in 2021. So I have been studying off and on for the last couple, three years, you know, while attempting to do my own hair. But I will say this, I have a lot of respect for professionals uh, color specialists, hairdressers, people in that field that go to school for this stuff and then continue furthering their education, you know, while, while having their, 
working with their clients and things like that. Um, my person was somebody who was always furthering her education. She was always going to whatever lectures, meetings, all these kinds of um, different things um, in that profession and, you know, meeting other people in that profession and gaining more knowledge the whole time as she went, you know, the whole time she had her salon and the whole time she was doing hair. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to pop on and talk about hair for a minute. I did a thing, <laughs> and uh, it's not—it's not, it's really not anything special to me. It's not any big deal. It's something I'm, you know, it's how I normally keep my hair. It's just shocking because, yes, I never meant to let it go this long. After I did it the first time in 2021, um, I'm trying to remember. Was it the fall? Was it was it the summer of 2020? When I did it the very first time on my own, not 2021, because it seems like I've done it three times now on my own, this being the third time. And it seems like it would always be about a year and a half in between before I could do it again, because life was so bad during those years and so chaotic and full of struggle and stress and stuff going on in my family with my partner and you know, what money I was making, you know, had to go to, you know, whatever, the survival at the time, and it was just rough back then, and so I was having to let it go. It might have been the summer of the pandemic. It might have been all that stuff really started with everything shutting down in early, like, late February, March of 2020. It might have been about six or eight months after that, like later in the year of 2020 that I actually bleached my hair. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to remember so that I can know exactly how long I went in between bleaches. Nonetheless, I did it the first time somewhere around 20 or 21. And that first time was hell it was you know really hard and I will say that I did not just jump into it I didn't just go out to Sally and go you know give me some bleach and no fuck no I sat for about a month straight before I ever attempted it and I watched video after video after video and not just any video like I would really really try to discern which ones were professionals what knowledge made sense and, and, you know, when you first start listening to stuff that's not even anywhere near your area of understanding or expertise or, or experience, it sounds foreign to you at first. And it can be just like, oh, God, this is overwhelming. It's boring. I don't understand what the fuck they're saying. Having a passion for it can help you learn. That is, that's one thing I have, you know, realized over time is that the things we are really passionate about that we actually kind of enjoy we learn them faster. We master them more. Um, we're going to be better at those things. And so, luckily, I do have a passion for learning. Not just one specific kind of knowledge. Um, my face looks really, really freaking red, y'all. I don't know why. I think it's getting hot in here because of the heater. Anyway. Could just be the lighting. I'm sitting right in front of this window. Hmm. I do have these red patches on my cheeks, but my whole face isn't really red right now. I think it's just the lighting. Yeah, it's that light bulb. Anyway, um, so luckily I do really have a passion for learning, okay? Um, so many different things. I can't say I'm passionate about every area of life. No, there are some things that I would go, oh, that's boring. I don't want to hear it. I don't, uh. I can't absorb that. I'm losing interest. But man, when it comes to a lot of certain things like language, I'm so passionate about so many different things. Music and music theory. Um, and then when we got when it got into doing hair, cooking and culinary arts and just so many things I'm passionate about learning. Psych psychological stuff, uh, spiritual stuff, philosophy. Oh my God. And then when it came time to start doing this, 
and paying attention to, you know, okay, the bleaching process, the toning process, I found that I actually, as I listened to, I don't know, I just, I think I just have a love for people that are passionate about their craft and passionate about what, what they know and what they're good at. And when they start teaching it, something about it excites me. So anyway, I was listening to different things about color theory and, you know, once it's time to tone your hair, what cancel, what color cancels out what. And I just thought, oh my God, you know, this really is fascinating. Um, and so it was easier for me to learn and retain certain things um, because I find it interesting and fascinating, you know? So that's the thing. If you can get interested in something, it'll help you learn it. It'll help you retain the knowledge. But yeah, I never meant to let my hair go. I was, you know, in the last year of uh, two years, okay, have been so traumatic and so tragic and so much sorrow and grief and depression. But I knew this day was coming. I knew eventually I would get caught up and I would start feeling a bit better and coming back to myself and getting my energy back. And I would, it'd be time to go, okay, this sucky hair that you've just been letting it go, it's time to deal with it. So yeah, about two weeks ago is when I first cut it. Um, that's when I got started. I'm like, you know what? Even though I love the pretty length, and, you know, this is all dark down to here, and the rest of it was blonde. I was like, even though that's going to take off most, a great deal of your blonde, I still did it. I was like, it's going to be healthier. It's going to feel great. So I just whack. I just chopped it in half, you know. I don't know how to cut hair. I'm not good at that. And I just thought, fuck it. You know what? It'll even out later on. I'll just give it a good. And I took three or four good inches off the bottom. Um, and then I cut right here and cut some bangs into it. Because I wanted this to be a little shorter so that I could have bangs if I wanted. And yeah, it was kind of messed up. So anyway, my sister ends up coming around. She's like, oh, hell no. Hell no. If you don't have somebody you're going to right now for your hair, uh-uh. We're going to take you somewhere and we're going to get them to even that up for you. And that's what we did. So, but yeah. So I wanted to talk about... Um, for those people who commented on my hair and for those who were interested when I posted my stuff on Facebook, the whole process and the pictures and yada, yada. Um, so I will talk about the process, kind of what I went through and what I've learned this far. But yeah, that first time, let me go back to that first time in 2020 or 21. Same thing had been had gone on. I had a lot of growth, a lot of dark. It wasn't going to be any easy job. So I cut about half the hair off, got it, you know, shorter, more manageable and healthier. And then for about a month, I did nothing but study, 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 watching the most professional people I could find on YouTube day and night, listening about the bleaching process, listening about the toning process. But even from that, you're not going to become a professional and you're still going to fuck up. There's still going to be a lot of questions and a lot of things you can't piece together, patch together because we don't have the experience. So, you know, I'm always going to say a professional is always going to do a better job. They've been to school for this. They've made it their whole life's work. They, they keep increasing their knowledge of this all the time while working on clients and so they're always going to do a better job. They're always going to know things we don't know. Um, but I think we can do a pretty decent job at home, you know, and come out with a pretty decent shade while still preserving the integrity of our hair where it doesn't melt off or burn out or feel like straw. I think we can do a pretty decent job if we really study, pay attention research, get some knowledge behind us, be patient with the process. That's one thing I've had to learn. Do not expect that you're just going to dive in the first time you ever bleach your hair in your whole life history and you're going to come out with a fantastic result. Um, 
or even if you've got a professional person giving you tips uh, because I had that too to go along with watching videos that very first time I was watching a bunch of like Brad Mondo I'm very fond of him and there's two or three other professionals on YouTube that I really keep up with their videos I listen to every word they're saying and when you first start listening to stuff like that again it's gonna be so far from your area of what the fuck that you know you might just kind of go oh I'll never learn this god I can't compute what they're saying you know mix this with that and this level that and this word and that word but the thing is if you keep listening you keep watching all different types of videos from that genre over a long period of time sooner or later that stuff will kind of start to click with you because you've heard it so many times right repetition repetition it'll start to click in what they mean and you'll start connecting dots and you'll really start getting things and picking up on some stuff that's valuable information like you know whatever about color theory and you know different things you really kind of need to know safety practices when doing this stuff and little tips and tricks plus the person that had been doing my hair professionally for years back in 20 or 21 I can't remember which year it was I did this the very first time on my own she also was giving me information I would you know I, I was able to call her and say you know this is what's going on with me right now is there anything you can tell me I need to watch out for or you know something, something da, 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 da. and she did and I really appreciated that and that helped me with that very first process on my own so I was prepared to a degree I did not just jump in and go all right I'm gonna slap this bleach on here and it's just gonna turn out fine fuck no I had really buckled down and studied for a month month and a half taking notes documenting things really listening to different professionals and getting professional tips from the person who had done my hair for many years and just really preparing myself for this and then not only that but going on YouTube and watching and watching and watching and watching watching people apply it watching professionals applying it um, just different things watching them create toners mixed toners just so much okay so I really had all I did all that before I did it myself the first time and it still did not come out picture perfect it's not a perfect thing you know even people with years and years and years and years of experience even professionals sometimes depending on your hair the quality of your hair how many other processes it's had before how healthy your hair is you know how much it can withstand some hair is more stubborn and just has trouble lifting so it's really all going to depend you know but that first time you know I won't say it came out crazy or anything um, but there were definitely things that very first time I had to do it myself that I had to learn from that mistakes those mistakes and I had to learn from that experience okay there were things when I ended up doing it the second time that I remember from the first time that I would not do again so anyway um but you know I know the basics of what you want to see what you want to watch for um, where you want to get it to it all is all going to depend on what shade of blonde you want some people like a real yellowy yellowy golden blonde and some people prefer a more icy white some people prefer it more even a little more on the grayish side and I never can make up my mind you know sometimes I like it icy white like like what my ends have going on here and sometimes I don't sometimes I get sick of that shit and I like it more th like this like not quite like this like I'm gonna bring this up a couple more shades maybe but that's gonna be tricky because not all of it needs to be brought up and and probably if I went to a salon in order to protect my hair they would probably foil it and the spots that are really white they would probably leave those alone and foil these darker spots you can see so I'll get into that in a minute what problems I see on this hair as an amateur as a novice uh, problem areas I can point out to you 
But, you know, ideally, just for an at-home job, going from super dark and wanting to be plow, pow, platinum, big difference, bright, 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 I think it turned out okay for that. I got it up there. I can perfect it later on. But, you know, I got it to come out okay. You know, several shades lighter. The toning went pretty well. And the integrity of my hair. It's nice and soft and shiny. You know, because I put, you know, I paid attention to what I was doing and safety precautions. And I put strengthener in the bleaching mix. And I did a nice conditioning mask afterwards. And, you know, I was just really careful with what I was doing. But, yeah. So, I guess I'll point out what problem areas I see. <laughs> um, you know, and one thing that was pointed out to me by a professional who did my hair and that, that I know now from studying is that you damn sure don't want to do get, get the bleach on the scalp first. And you know, this is a learning process for me. I made, I still made several mistakes this time that, that were fixable. They weren't the end of the world, but I will remember when I do this next time or as time goes on to fucking pay attention to that. Like for instance, don't start in the damn front when you get all and sections like sections are important. You know, the first, se first, second time I did bleach my own hair. I literally just fucking gra started grabbing chunks of it and slapping that shit on there. And it was a fucking mess. It was like working with concrete and there were big thick clods of bleach and because what it makes your hair feel like concrete. It's going to be very difficult. You're not going to be able to get the bleach saturated if you do big old thick chunks of hair. So it is important to section your hair at least into four different quadrants with clips or whatever. There's a reason why the professionals deserve the money. There's a reason they make the money. There's a reason that they I have much respect for them. The shit takes work and patience. So yeah... In order to get the bleach on there really, really well and let it do its job and you don't come out with, oh shit, it's brown spot there and it's orange here and it's blonde here. And just so it does its job, it's better to section it into four quadrants and then only take out little strips of hair at a time out of the quadrant and saturate the shit out of that with your brush. And my ass does not like to start working my way up from the bottom. You know, if somebody else is doing it, it's different. But for me, it's easier to just start at the top, paint my way down. But you're really supposed to stay a half inch away from the scalp so it don't burn it. And I'm not a professional. These, these numbers may not be spot on correct. I don't know shit. I'm just telling y'all what I've done and what, what I know so far um, that I think is right. But you're supposed to stay at least a half inch away from the scalp. So it doesn't, because this shit, the scalp is hot and the heat that that creates, it's going to develop that bleach just like that. And if you got bleach all up in here first, then it's going to turn platinum white. I mean, just white out. They call it hot roots. While the rest of your hair is trying to develop. And so you're going to have these white out hot roots, ugly, and this orangey blonde hair at the, at the, for your result. So the shit can get complicated, but it's best to do sections and then within each quadrant, work with little bitty strands at a time. Get that shit saturated on there. Stay away from the scalp. Leave about that much room. Kick that shit over and keep working. And start at the back. I fucked up this time. I did not start at the back. I started in the front quadrant. This one. I had it all in a little ball and I started working, you know, with little, little slivers at a time, getting them saturated, working my way back. Also five to seven minutes a quadrant. I learned that from Brad, Brad Mondo. That's what he says. You know, because you're timing this shit, you want to get the shit on your hair, get it really saturated, get it in the cap, let it start processing and set your timer. But you have to think about, well, when did I start with the first quadrant? And... So you need to move through that quadrant as quickly as possible on to the next and to the next and get that shit on and set your timer. And it can just get crazy. Like, and then you have to think, well, shit, the first quadrant I did has already been processing a while. 
while I'm moving on to get this shit on my hair, certain parts of my hair, they're already lifting up blonde. And then I'm going to set this timer for a certain amount with the cap on and let it process more. But yeah, that's important. Do little sections of hair, um, do quadrants and, and separate everything out so you can get it on really well. All right, but I didn't start at the back. I fucked up. Started with this front quadrant right here. And then I, when I, after I realized I was halfway done with it, I was like, well, fuck, there's something I can do now. So this motherfucking shit's going to be real, real blonde. And it was already coming up. You know, by the time I got back here and started working on this, I could already see this shit coming up. And I'm like, oh, fuck, okay. Which, that's okay. I mean, I don't want uneven shit, but... You know, it's okay if this gets a little wider. Okay, I can live with that. But I quickly moved on to, got back to the back and did what I was supposed to do. Start in the back. And I know, doing an at-home job, it sucks. Look at that. It is no fucking fun at all. You're trying to work that quadrant, take one little strand at a time down, and look at that. Yeah, it's hell. Okay? You're trying to take one little strand at a time down. And I know, I'm sure people that have been doing it at home for years or whatever, they got their little techniques and they got it down, but this shit's hard. And you're trying to do even less than that. Like a little strand at a time so you can fully saturate that shit. Get it on real, real good. Not get it too far up on the scalp. Alright? And work your way through the back quadrants. And then work your way to the last top quadrant. And get it all on there. And then finally, get it up in your cap. And set your timer for processing. Um, and then I wait until the very end. I don't touch those roots. I leave them dark about a half inch. And I use, you know, cause I'm putting 30 volume developer with my lightning powder on these middle mid, what do they call it? Mid, the mid parts of your hair. These are the ends, the mids and the roots. I don't know. I, th I think that's what it's called. My hair can withstand 30 volume on the the middle, okay? But I don't get nowhere near the scalp with 30 volume developer. It's too strong. And fry the fuck out of my roots or white hot them or whatever. So I go back in with 20 volume, which is low and slow. A professional taught me that. Someone who used to do my hair. Kind of like cooking in the crock pot. Funny how a lot of things in life can apply to that. You can apply that to low and slow patience and it's funny how a lot of things come out way better if you have patience and you go low and slow put some love into it you know put some time into it anyway anyway now let me get off track so when i get all the quadrants done with the 30 volume shit and I'm, I haven't even mentioned trying to avoid the already blonde that was already there. We'll talk about that in the end when I point out every single problem that I see with this hair. All right. But I'll point out each problem. But I will typically, after I do all four quadrants, supposed to start with the back because they take longer to process. They are the most stubborn. They are the ones that are way under there that never get any light. And you're supposed to start with the back. Get those done and move your way to the front quadrants. All right, with the 30 volume. That's what works best for my hair. 40, you can use that. It'll bleach the fuck out your hair. But it'll also possibly break, damage, split it, fry it. It'll be like fucking straw. So, 30. I don't go any more than 30 volume on here. And, oh, I forgot. My video's cut off. I can't, I can post this on YouTube. But I can't post it on Facebook after the 35 mark. The volume cuts off. Blah. Oh, well, whatever. I'll just film it for YouTube and I'll share it on Facebook later. So anyway, back to hair talk. Um, what was I saying? I feel so much better with this done, you guys, though. I really, really do. I have been waiting so long and just wanting to get it done. And it just gives me a whole new energy. Um, but yeah, so I don't ever go above 30 volume and my hair, first of all, you need to know what is your hair shade? Well, you can look at my eyebrows and you guys can look at my other videos and you could tell my hair is pretty damn dark. It's not black. I don't even know if it's what I would call super dark, dark brown. 
it's somewhere between a medium and a dark brown. But if you look at, if you think about color theory and you study a little bit of that and you look at the color wheels and you look at hair shades and all that, you will find that the dark, that, that down on the bottom, one, two, and those levels, that's the darkest of hair from black, dark brown on up. And it goes all the way up into your blondes, which would probably start at seven, eight, nine, and 10. 10 being, I think, the highest level shade of blonde. And then you would tone it out according to that number that you got it up to. For a person with dark hair like mine, it's not even black, but it is pretty deep brown. I think I'm somewhere on the, on the um, scale. I am a four or five. I would have to ask a professional because I have a hard time telling even on the chart. But I think I'm pretty far down there, pretty low, you know, on the chart. Four or five level hair with the darkness. And typically, well, I want to get it up to a nine or ten. That's, you know, I don't know. I would, I would think this would be close to a level ten. It looks very bright. So it's close. Um, I think I got it up to about a nine. But in some of these areas, it's not. It's not all the way nine or, ten, or anywhere near ten. And I will point that out in the end. You know what I'm talking about there but some of these areas are level 10 that that had previous bleaching on it though which it didn't need anymore that was a problem I shouldn't have done that but you know whatever um okay so you need to know what shade your hair is to begin with and then, you, you know, you have to think about, all right, well, how many, if you're trying to get from, for, for a black, platinum blonde or a very bright blonde from a very dark hair color that, you know, and you have to think about, has it, does it have a box on it? Does it have any other dye on it? Mine was not virgin hair because it's been processed, processes on it for many, many years. But in a way it was virgin to me because it had grown out for two years. It was very healthy, strong natural color hair that had not had any processes on it in two years except the ends so but you have to know what's my shade and how many shades am I going up it's really a science and it's really interesting to learn so for my dark color hair and sometimes it's not just because it's dark hair sometimes it's just because it's your hair it's stubborn ass hair my hair is like that no matter what bleach they use no matter what magic is out there for my level hair and just my personal chemistry, my damn hair, it generally from the darkest point will only pull up three shades in one bleaching process, in one lightening process at a time. I would love to be able to jump from that dark all the way up to, you know, um, nine or ten at a time. But for the most part, it doesn't do that. It only takes me up about three shades. So I land on about a seven or eight, depending. This time, I think I made it close to a nine. It worked out pretty well this time, but in some areas, it didn't. Okay, so you, so you get what I'm saying. I'm having to come from four or five on a dark level all the way up. And usually, I land on seven, eight somewhere. And so that you're going to need to know that stuff, though, when you start picking out your toners and what actual shade you have gotten it up to. So it's that kind of thing, all right? So anyway, 30, 30 volume developer on the mid parts of my hair. And then when I got all the quadrants done, I went back in with a 20 volume developer. And another thing I didn't mention, I... And I got this from professionals. I picked it up. These aren't my ideas. This isn't my training. I didn't go to school for this. It's just shit I've learned from, from professionals on YouTube, Brad Mondo, my professional hairdresser, and others over the years and remembered the stuff or written it down or experimented with it, and it works very well. Um, another thing, I really put these certain tricks to use this time, certain policies that professionals, some professionals have. Instead of me mixing up the entire bowl of bleach, I know professionals call it lightener, but I'll call it bleach just to, to get this done. <laughs> Instead of me mixing up my whole product for my whole head of hair, like the first couple of times I did it, I would just pile it in there and try to mix up enough for the whole hair setting. 
and then by the end I'd have to mix up just a little more but that would mean working through each quadrant that product was left sitting there and sitting there and sitting there while I was trying to get you know and I think it loses power over time I have heard this from professionals it starts to foam and get weird so this time I wanted to be really I, I put a lot of tricks into effect I was very careful about sectioning and making sure to quadrant making sure to then take off little fine strips at a time to get full saturation. I took a, and like Brad, Brad Mondo said, when it comes to bleaching, take your time. I know I've heard him say this. Don't panic. The first couple of times I did it, I was in a panic and I was in a rush. And I was grabbing things and thinking, oh God, if I don't hurry, then this, then that wasn't true. And it actually turned out a lot better this time than the first two times I ever did it. By, by doing certain things, having patience, don't panic, take your time, but hurry up if that makes sense. Stay aware that you need to be moving through each damn section as quickly as you can so you can get onto your processing with the bag and the timer and, and get this shit out of your hair because you can't leave it on there forever. But at the same time, stop panicking, stop grabbing big wads and oh fuck, I got to hurry through this and now this and that. That's not going to help anything. So take your time, but be aware and move as quickly as you can through each quad quadrant, but stay calm and put it on there the right way, doing your sectioning, making sure it gets evenly saturated, okay? So not only did I pay real close attention to that this time, but I also mixed a new batch of product for each quadrant. And I know that's going to be at a point where you're getting a little bit more brave, See, I'd already done this twice myself. And I know there's some people out there going, what? I've done my hair fucking hundreds of times myself. Okay, well, I haven't. This was only my third time. So I thought that was really brave this time to attempt to branch out and learn something new and see if it gave a better effect on my hair. The last time I did this, I've, I've done it twice before, once in 2020 or 21, and then again in 22, summer of 22. And... The first bleaching, it was awful. I only got it up to about a seven shades of blonde. I only got up to about a seven or eight. It was mustardy. It was orange. It was this. It was that. Even after toning, it was just ugh, not what I wanted. So, of course, I had to go back in and do it again. But what I'm saying is I was able to get it up, I think, close to a nine this time. I was up to just this first bleaching, I guess because my hair was healthy. It had grown so long, and I followed certain procedures that really I think really helped get that shit on up there as high as possible on the first bleaching round. I am going in to do it again, but it got up pretty damn high this time, except in certain spots. But of course, when I first removed, you know, the cap and got ready to wash that first bleach out before toning, of course, of course it looked crazy yellowy orange weird but I could tell I had gotten that shit up pretty damn high as far as the shades of blonde you want to try to get up to at least a nine or ten you really do that's what most blondes are after but many times we only land on about a seven or an eight okay so I think that helped not only doing the sectioning well this time and smaller strands of hair, good saturation, but also after each quadrant, don't panic. Oh God, I can never take time to do that. Yes, you can. Take a couple seconds, get you a new scoop of powder and a little product, a little developer and mix a new batch of lightener for each quadrant. That's what I heard from professionals, and I think it helped me this time, okay? Now, I saved the roots for last, and don't get me wrong. Shit was going everywhere. I was flopping bleach over onto the floor, and my shirt even fucking got some in my eye at one point. I mean, it was crazy. I, it was messy. It's hard to do on your own. I am not really super good at this yet, but I go back in at the end, okay? When I'm done with all my sections, and I mix up one more round of powder bleaching. This time I used Wella. I've used B2 Clairol before, but Wella. I used Wella Color Charm or Wella Powder Bleach this time. Sally Developer. But I go back in at the end with 
the less strong developer. The 20 is not as strong as that 30. And it is safer for your scalp. I would not put 30 on my scalp. So I went back in at the very last after all the quadrants were saturated with bleach. And I painted on the um, bleach on my roots with the 20 volume developer. Got those roots nice and saturated to the back. Pulled up, you know, the in-between quadrants there and just tried to do it the best I could getting it on that scalp with the 20 volume. And then I placed the sprayed a little water in the cap, just a little bit, keep it moist. And I, Brad Mondo said that too, put the cap on it and I set my timer based on, I always get mixed up there too. Like, well, fuck, I've been working on this shit 45 minutes, it seems like. So do I need to set the timer for another 45 minutes? How, how long total from the time I started painting it on can I actually safely leave this shit on my hair? So you really just kind of have to guess at that and calculate that. I still get kind of confused about that. But for me the other day, I know it took me probably close to 45 minutes to get it on all the quadrants. I'm not that good yet. Five to seven minutes a quadrant my ass and mixing new product through each quadrant. But I used to see my hairdresser do that too. I would see her stop and mix up new product. And I thought to myself, well, she wasn't panicking. And she took her time sometimes foiling or whatever she had to do to get it on there. So, and then I would think, well, how long did she leave me to process after it was all done? Not super, super long. Okay. Not like an hour. So I was thinking, well, use common sense. Okay. You know, um, so what I did was, it probably took me 30, 45 minutes at least to get it all over my head, get the cap on and set the timer. So I left it 30 minutes beyond after I put the cap on and everything. But sometimes that's kind of a scary thing and it's hard to calculate. I'm sure other people have the same fucking question and the same confusions. And we just have to hope for the best, right? I never claimed this was a professional video. So please, please, this is not. Please do your research and ask your professionals, okay, if you have really serious problems or questions. But, so, um, yeah, that's what I do. 30 volume and bleach on the longer parts and go back in with the 20, get that all nice and set, cap, whatever, rinse out. <coughs> Toners, I could talk about that in a different video. This one's going to get pretty long. But I think it will upload to YouTube. It doesn't hurt it to be that, you know, long. It's Facebook that always cuts off. About 35 minutes in, it cuts my volume off where nobody can hear it. It's weird. But, I don't know. I'm just posting this one because y'all know I got a bunch of different stuff on my channel. I usually talk about psychology or spirituality or so many different things. But, this is a part of my life. And, you know, I thought there might be people out there that would be interested in the hair stuff. So, I just thought I would share it. Um... Because I find it fascinating and interesting. Oh. I mean, I can write these down. I'm not a hair girl. I'm not a hair channel or anything like that. I could make it more organized and write all the things down that I've learned this far that I find helpful. I know this is kind of disorganized. But, you know, there's a zillion videos like that out there. So, whatever. But, another thing I did... I'm just, you know, showing people what I came out with and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. You know, it isn't, it's not the final result and I am going to do it again. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to talk about the problem areas. But I think I came out with a pretty damn nice result as dark as my hair was. And for it to be as soft and shiny as it is, I think, you know, not bad. So another thing I did was not only pay attention to sectioning properly, doing smaller pieces of hair at a time properly, fuller or even saturation through the quadrants. Um, also, I put um, a, they have this little, I think it's, I have the box. In fact, I could be showing you guys these products along the way. Durr. Y'all know how I am, though. I don't really always plan out my videos, and some people really hate that, and it makes them mad. 
I don't always really plan out my videos and structure them the way I should. Um, but some of them I do, and some of them I put quite a lot of work into, quite a lot of editing and time, and it just depends. Sometimes I just want to jump on here and chit-chat and share knowledge with you guys, and I'm sorry if it's kind of disorganized, but, oh, okay, here's what I'm talking about. You know, but I'm not a professional hair care person, and I'm not a hair care channel. I'm just talking smack about what I did with my hair, and I thought I would share some important stuff along the way, so it is kind of disorganized, but whatever. Kind of like we're just two friends chatting it up. <laughs> and oh, by the way, I don't know, maybe in the future I'll go back and make a more organized video on hair since I am doing my own hair now and, you know, I like the learning process of it. Maybe I will do some better videos in the future and pass more information along. But it's, it's ION, I-O-N, and it's this. color brilliance okay booster looks like this it's a little oil in a bottle damn did i not even use all that holy crap i sure didn't that's probably that last little bit i put instead of mixing up the whole bowl to do my hair like in one sitting i would mix up each quadrant of product through each quadrant and then put a quarter bottle of this in each quadrant in each bowl and that was what I was saving to put on the roots and I didn't put that in I forgot that very last part but this is like a booster it's for strengthening and it says help strengthen smooth and restore moisture so it's kind of a it's kind of a, a some some stylists um, call it bonding. I don't know. You just have to ask the Sally person. Tell them I need the um, protection. That's what. That's all I ever say. I need the protection to put in my bleach. I know that sounds kind of country ass, ghetto, whatever you want to call it, but yeah, I need the protection to put in my bleach to protect my hair. And strengthen it while I am lightening it and they will know they will run right to this they'll know exactly what you're talking about so this little bottle is just some little oil and you put it right into your lightening bleach powder mixture mix it right on up in there before you apply to your hair okay so I did do that so I was just kind of trying to recap with several of the things that I felt like helped me come out with a better lightning job this time from dark, dark, dark ass brown was definitely, you know, um, focusing on quadrants, focusing on um, light, uh, smaller strips of hair, better saturation, focusing on, um, damn it, every time I want to recap this, it slips my brain. Um, oh, mixing up fresh product from quadrant to quadrant so it has still has that intense power instead of just sitting there okay I think these things help and I've heard professionals say the same things um, you know whatever put the protection in the bleach mixture while I'm doing that all right um, I may go through and get a little notebook out you know and, and keep a journal of these things I've kept all my boxes and products because I am experimenting. You know, it had been almost two years since I had done anything to my hair. And I didn't have a whole lot of experience with it. And I still don't. I had someone doing my hair for years. I could make a video, and maybe I will at some point, and show you guys the lovely, lovely blonde that this professional kept my hair for almost 20 years. A beautiful shade of platinum, creamy blonde. Okay? just beautiful and healthy um, and maybe at some point I'll do that but you know as far as me having the experience nope nope I've just had to trial and error and put the time in and do some studying and learn from experience toners are fun thank God for toner learning about toner is fun um, I was gonna say I don't know if I'm going to have time in this video. 
they're on my Facebook. I was going to say, I could pull up the pictures and show you the before and after. But most of you who know anything about bleaching, who do your hair or, you know, you've been doing, you go to the hairdresser or whatever, you know that with dark hair, it's generally going to come out an ugly ass, yellow, orange, ugly, weird, oh my God, it's going to freak you out at first color. That's a given. That is always going to do that before you tone it. But getting the right toner is important too. But typically, if you get the right toner, then it will turn that ugly yellow, you know, toners, what they do, you find on the color wheel, you find what cancels out what. Like how, um, I can't always remember exactly what they are, but how ash, you know, it'll be called something else in Sally's or at the hair store. It'll be like ash instead of saying blue. I think that's the one that is, stands for blue. Like ash will cancel out. Damn it, where are my notes? I need my notes. Violet, purple on the color wheel, you'll see that purple cancels out orange and blue cancels out yellow. Okay, now I may have gotten those backwards because I'm not a professional, but you get what I'm saying. But in Sally's, when you go to looking at toners, they're not always going to say those exact things. It's not going to say blue. It's going to say A for ash. Or different brands have different letters and numbering. But you have to find out, okay, ash, what is the base of that? Is it more blue? That's what that is. All right, and purple, it's not going to say purple on the box at Sally's generally. There'll be numbers usually, like with the Wella Color Charm toners. It'll be like 9N or 9V. Well, that's the shade of blonde you're on. You are all the way up to a level 9 blonde and you're getting a purple, that V is what it's going to say violet instead of purple. You're going to get the purple to cancel out the hideous tones that we always come up with. And it's going to turn them to a nicer shade. But you have to know what that shade is that you want. First, you kind of have to know, all right, well, what, after I've bleached it up as far as I can for today, what am I left with? Is it more orange? Is it more yellow, yellow? And then get your toner accordingly. And what shade? And be honest with yourself too. The first couple times I did this on myself, I did not want to be honest with myself. I wanted to believe I had gotten myself to a 10. I was a 10. I was 9 or 10. And that that toner was just magically going to make it okay and no it didn't make it any higher okay i still had to stay at that same tone i still had to stay on that same level eight blonde with just a slightly more tolerable tone and then i would have to go in and get it up those other two shades and then tone it you know but don't lie to yourself when you go into sally's or wherever you're going to get your toner be honest is it really up to the blonde, you know, don't get a toner that says level nine violet or level nine, whatever, or level 10, whatever, knowing you're still over here at a seven or eight and it's orangey, you know, darker blonde. Cause it's yeah, whatever. So I learned that from Brad Mondo. He preaches that highly and I've learned it from experience. Okay. But I could go on a lot about the toning, the stuff I've learned about toners. And there's so many good professionals on YouTube um, that would probably be better for you to look, look towards and, and, you know, get information from, cause I am so not a professional. Um, but I do like to talk about what I have learned. Um, and so, yeah, after I bleached it, um, Washed it out, conditioned it, and all that. In fact, I think I may make a follow-up video that's way more organized than this. And just talk about, at some point, exactly step-by-step step what I did. So that, for those people that want to hear that. Um, and I'll grab the toner boxes and show you those really quickly. 
because what I like to do is I like to get brave and mix toners. Well, and it makes sense. But see, here's what I have trouble with. After you bleach your hair. All right. Well, all you really did was strip the pigment from your hair. Now it's like a blank canvas. You can go to any tone you want. Any color you want. Some people like to do funny, fun, bright, crazy colors, blue, pink, whatever. And most of us are trying to stay blonde when we're bleaching, but we're unsure of what shade of blonde we really want. Do we want an icy, cool, white, platinum? And then you have to learn about warmer toners and cooler toners. Toners that have a more cool undertone or whatever you see here's where i'm not an expert but i know this part of it or toners that have a more warm and i have heard from professionals that toners who have a more warm that have a more warm um tone to them are going to leave your hair much brighter blonde whereas the ones that are more cool like ash i think ash is more along the cool it is going to leave your hair a bit darker a little more of a grayish or silvery tint. Now, that I don't a lot of times that's nothing to be alarmed about. That will wash out after a while and you'll just be left with a nice white blonde. But it always scares me when I've just done that T18 shit and not been on the right level, not even been on the right shade of blonde and watched that shit turn dark 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 grayish or whatever. I hurry up and wash that shit out. Another thing with toner too, you don't have to leave it on there the entire time. It depends. If you've got your hair bleached up almost to a 9 or 10 and it's already pretty damn bright and you get the right toner concoction, you might only need one. You might need a mix of two, depending on what shade you want. Well, there's where I always get confused and like, I know kind of what I want, but I don't know exactly how the concoction to get it. And I have to learn a little bit more about what cancels what and what, 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 and testing and experimenting. But some toners, you get it on there and within about 10 minutes, whoa, you're, it's already nice and creamy and the color, the tone that you would like to have, not that ugly, yellow, orangey, weird anymore. And you're like, oh shit, it's just going to keep getting darker though so you take your hair and you strip it off a little bit and you see the tone of it and you take that shit off you can go ahead and rinse it you don't have to leave that toner on there the whole time some are 15 minutes some are up to 25 now yesterday i mixed two toners and well one and a half i didn't use the entire cool i used the more warm and because of what I came up with, I'm going to tell you how I came to this decision and let bleached my hair first, waited till I got to the results and then made my decision on how I was going to concoct my toner based on these results. When I got done bleaching, I had went ahead and bought them ahead of time. And I know that's hard, but I know my hair. I knew that it was going to come out with a lot of orange and a lot of ugly yellow mustard shit, or a lot of both, depending on what shade I was able to get up to. So I went ahead and bought these two. Should have bought three or four of them because I'm going to do this process again. But I went ahead and bought these two ahead of time. So if you kind of know, you know, if not, you may have to go back to the supply store after the bleach is done um, and go from there. But based on my results, to see how far I could get it up after doing 30 volume on the length, 20 volume on the roots, putting the nice cap on it, a little moisture in the cap, putting the timer on it, checking it every five to seven minutes, making sure that everything is, you know, good and in place and rubbed in pretty good. Just check it, um, rinsing that shit out, shampooing it out, getting it all out of my hair and then looking at the results of it. Wow. I can show you guys the pictures. It was ugly, which is normal. It was so fucking bright and mustard, a lot brighter than mustard, but just an ugly, ugly yellows and some orange running through. And yeah, it was time to tone. And so I thought, well, but it came up a lot higher than I expected. 
it came up a lot higher than a seven or eight. I'm pretty sure, I'm not a professional though, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure in some areas yesterday, for sure, I got to a level nine blonde and in some, maybe 10. But I knew there were also some trouble spots that didn't get up that high that are still, some of them might be on a seven or an eight. Yeah. But since it came up so high so well, um, and I think that was due to, well, it wasn't the first time I had done it. I, I thought it was due to, well, you're getting a little better and a little better over time with practice and knowledge and taking your time this time, trying to move swiftly, but also taking your time, not panicking, sectioning, you know, uh, better, more even coverage and saturation, um, you know, all the, the tips that you implemented this time, it probably came out for, a, it, it helped it lift better, you know, so th those are things to really think about. So anyway, so what I decided to do was I waited to see the outcome and my outcome was actually, I had to decide, is it a lot of orangey and a lot of yellowy? Or is it just, is it more yellowy than orangey? What the fuck here? Is it both? And I thought, well, it's actually some of both, but it's predominantly more yellowy, golden, but that ugly yellowy. So what I decided was that I was going to take the one that cancels yellow. That made sense, right? It was predominantly more yellowy, ugly, yellowy. And that was the part that needed to be canceled, neutralized, and toned. For a nicer shade. So I took the one. This is 9A. Ash blonde. And this is 9V. Light cool blonde. So I have bought both. This is violet. V 9V. It's going to be purple. And I knew ahead of time. Before I ever left the store. That I would probably this time. Be able to get myself up to a level 9. You have to kind of know. Like. Um, and tone on the right level. But what I did was, and I have trouble remembering, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. If any professional runs across this, I am so sorry if I got them backwards. But I took the one, and I'm, I'm thinking it's ash, which is blue. Blue cancels yellow, and purple cancels orange. Or no, I always get them backwards, y'all. But whichever one, okay? I had it right at the time. Um, I took the one that cancels yellow. Look at the color wheel and know which one that is. Um, if it's blue cancels yellow, then that would be ash. A. So I use the entire tube of A and I cut it with not the whole tube of this, not the whole two ounces, but I cut it with about an ounce of violet, 9V. This is made by Ion, Color Brilliance. Um, I cut it with just a little bit of the violet, ash and violet, but more of the, this, because it was going to, because it was predominantly yellow. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to go too much cooling. Like, I was really trying to get that balance right on these toners. And it's like experimenting, and you got to just kind of hope for the best. I know, it's crazy. But over time, with study and practice and paying attention, you know, I think we can get pretty good at it. And, you know, I'm not saying avoid hairdressers. They are worth their money. I respect the shit out of them. But I know that a lot of us, you know, for whatever reasons, we just can't afford that or go to the hairdresser or whatever, what have you. Um, and some of us just like to do this. We like to learn. But yeah, that's what I did. I mixed. I used the entire tube of the one that cancels out the ugly, ugly yellow and neutralizes it and makes it prettier. So I did that to a little bit of this. I still got a half a tube of this one left. So I put some of this in the other toner, mix the two together, and I'll tell you this. I used a 20 volume developer for my toner, and these are permanent toners. Now I'm going to tell you, in the past, I have been scared to use permanent toners, and I was scared to use 20 volume developers in my toners and the first couple times I did this process I was so scared of breaking my hair and frying it after the bleach that I would only use a demi permanent toner and I would only use 10 volume developer in my toner 
And for, for me, that just don't do the trick. I think that's another reason this time why I was able to come out with it as bright as it is was also in the toning process. But if you look at this in certain light, and again, before I close out this video, I will point out to you all the mistakes that I am aware of. And who knows, you know, if professionals run across this or, you know, hair people that know what they're doing, I'm sure they can instantly see the mistakes. But, okay, with everything else I mentioned that helped me get a, a better lightening job this time, y'all, I know my face looks terribly red in this lighting, but it's really not that red, I promise you. Okay, I mentioned them several times, the things that I think helped me get an overall better lightening this time, that I'm, that at least... I feel like I can bear it for a week or two while I let it rest. And then I'm going to go back in again with another 20 volume round and just bring it on up. Just bring the problem areas on up and tone them out again. And I should be good to go. These ends don't need shit. They are over processed. They do not need shit, but you can see versus the ends, how, what level I actually got the hair up to in, in certain spots. In certain spots, I only got it up to what looks like to me a 7 or an 8 versus other spots. I was able to get it up to a 9 or 10. But you can see it all throughout my hair. These splotches of, you know. But in this day and age, it's like, who gives a fuck? You know, people are doing so many different things with their hair. But I know it's really rough in the back, you know. But overall, I can deal with it. That's the underneath. What's covering that is fine. I can deal with it though, you know, and at least I got it up and it's healthy and I can go back in and do another round. So, um, okay. Other than sectioning, paying attention to how I'm applying it, making new product for each quadrant, taking my time, but being swift. Other than that, um, I also think that I had to get over my fear when it comes to toning I was really terrified because my professional hairdresser had explained to me and it's the truth that if you use a permanent toner and you use higher volume developer to tone then instead of just depositing the shade like after you've done all that lifting, intense lifting and bleaching on your hair and it's hurting, <laughs> it's hurting. Then when you go back into tone, depending on which toner you use, semi, demi or permanent and how strong your developer is, it's going to keep lifting that hair along with depositing some shade. It's going to open up the cuticle or whatever they call it even it's going to keep opening it even more and it depending on your hair how strong it is how healthy it is if it can take that mine could because it had almost two years of growth on it it was healthy as fuck my hair is pretty tough anyway but i really don't want to do you know i really don't want to damage my hair i don't want ugly straw hair i don't want hair falling out i don't want breakage so you know, those things are things that I think about. But I knew this time, I thought, you know what? Along with every other thing you're putting into practice today to get that shit up as high as you can in one lightning round with safety measures in, in check, with everything you're putting into this process, this time your hair is gone so long. It's got the natural oils in it. I waited about three or four days to even, I didn't wash it until I bleached it. So all that natural oil would be protecting my scalp and my hair. And it had grown for so long. I knew my hair would be able to take it this time. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to fuck around with Demi Permanent, which still opens the cuticle a little bit. It still keeps lifting a little bit, but not as much as Permanent. And I only use 10 volume developer. That didn't do shit at all. It just basically, you know, it opened the hair a little bit, gave it a little bit of extra lift while toning, but not much. It mostly deposited that shade. 
for me, I was like, okay, uh-uh. You know, depending on how dark or warm or cool you want your blonde to be, this shit is a science. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And this is what I went through yesterday, trying to figure all this out and watching different videos and really trying to think about it. And so, um, what I did this time, I was like, all right, bet. My hair can take it. It's healthy enough. I'm going to bleach the shit out of it as much as I can safely do properly. And then I'm going to wash all that out of there. And then when it's time to tone and condition real, real good. And I did. And then when it's time to tone, I'm going to mix up my toning concoction. What I think is about right based on the results of what I see. Okay. Okay. What I see yesterday after bleaching, I saw a lot more ugly yellow. Ugly yellow. I can show y'all some ugly pictures of it. All right. So, all right, I'm going to mix up my toning concoction, and I'm going to use a 20-volume developer with it this time. I know some people are like, that's all I ever use. I wouldn't dream of using less than that, you know. But as a novice, the first couple of times I did this, I was terrified, absolutely terrified that I was going to burn my hair off, that it was going to fall out in fucking chunks and clumps and, you know, so I was very careful, and some boxes will recommend that you only use a 10-volume developer with your toner. What well, or not? But I've had professionals carefully explain this to me. Now you can, you can go with permanent, and you could go with 20-volume developer, but just know that it is continuing to lift. It's going to give you, and for me, it gave quite a bit of extra lift to deal with 20-volume developer with the toner. Um. So, that works well for me, and I like that. It's just going to depend on the health of your damn hair and what all you've done to it first. And, you know, again, I always recommend going to a professional. I Everything that I've talked about here today, I have ch I checked with my professional hairdresser first. Um, I watched many, many, many countless hours of professional videos and research and study and trial and error on my own hair, but I am still not a professional. So please, you know, be discerning, be careful, um, use good judgment and consult professionals before you go do anything to your hair. Cause your hair may be very different from mine. All our hair is different, right? I was just looking at these eyebrows like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I love the contrast I always have of darker brown you know, eyes and eyebrows with the blonde, but I have an eyebrow pencil where I actually lighten my eyebrows and I always have. I don't, I don't like my eyebrows just as they are. Um, and so I've been thinking about putting a little bit, I've never, I've had my, my brows lightened once by a professional back when I was about 20. I don't know what they did. I guess they just put a little bit of bleach on there and let it wiped it off. You know, I, I don't know, but I think that would scare me to death to do that. But sometimes I like that. You know, but I'd be afraid I'd get them like blonde or something. I don't fucking want them that light. And then that would ruin everything. The contrast. So, no, I just like them a little bit lighter brown. You know, not this black, brown, plain. They're ugly when you get up close. But I have a light brown or a reddish brown eye pencil that I really love. And it just lightens them up just a bit. I do like that. And I wish I could have them professionally lightened or I could do it myself to more match a little bit. We'll talk about that another day. That's a whole nother level of bravery I would have to get to. But so anyway, that's the hair thing I did. Um, I just jumped on. I think initially I was going to talk about something else, but I, I knew that I did this and I knew a few people knew about it. And so I just kind of wanted to talk about it. And share what I went through and what I know. But yeah, that's what I did this time around to get these results. And in different lighting, it looks different. Now, before I go, let's talk about the problem areas. Um, but yeah, that that was, I think that was, that was it. The bleaching process, the tips and tricks, uh, what I did with the toners, what I used with the toners and how I mixed them and what volume I used and this time to give myself that extra lift and it didn't damage my hair. 
I and I also left them on for the full 25 minutes because of where my hair was at at the time. I paid attention. I looked at the strands to see, you know, because you don't always have to leave it on the full amount. There are some toners that you've already got just about gotten it to the level you want. And within 10 minutes, they start working and it's a nice shade, you know, and you're like, oh, shit, it's already there. But it's just going to keep toning darker or whatever. So I better wash this shit off. You have to kind of pay attention. Um, but yeah, that was the toning process. And then I thoroughly washed that out, deep, deeply conditioned it and let it dry a little bit, damp dry. And then I applied a deep conditioning mask. And I let that sit on there for quite some time to really, you know, give it some help. You know, your hair's hurting after all that. So, yeah, I did that. And now I'm going to wait about a week. And then I'm going to go back in with 20 volume developer. And I'm going to try to bring up, bring it up maybe one more shade. I really don't need to go much higher. But, yeah... When I'm in different lighting, you can really see it. That some of these areas are not, like this shit, that's not, not anywhere near a level 10 blonde. And this shit running through here, like, yeah, when I turn it over, uh-uh, that's not going to work. That's what I'm talking about. And it's hard to tell it in certain lighting. And the roots, you have to be so careful on the roots and the scalp, man. Like, ugh. I'm just glad to not have that shitty brown gray that I had, you know? Okay, so let's talk about problem areas before I clip this video. And I don't know, I might make another one about hair at some point. Um, as I go and I learn, I'm really hoping to continue doing it on my own and from here on out it'll only be root touch-ups minor root touch-ups instead of full bleaching processes I hope I don't have to do that again I hope I can keep up with it you know um problem areas all right let's talk about where I know I went wrong or I feel it's a problem in my eyes or where I feel like professionals would look at it and go oh yeah that's a fuck up um which I've kind of been pointing them out as we go but next time, I will definitely, definitely, if I ever had to do this full blonde shit again, or even when I do my roots, I will remember to start at the back. Start where your hair takes the longest to process, which is going to be in the back. Look at that. You see what I mean? I started in the front and then remembered and jumped back to the back. But still, parts of my front were processing you know, before, and these took longer, and that can just be a mess, and so this stuff won't have as much time, it needs more time, that's why we start there first, let that shit be working, boy, let that shit be just soaking in while we get on and work around the rest of it, so yeah, that's why I have some problem areas in the back that didn't lift up, and they're underneath, like, they're underneath the rest of it, so you can't tell it is bad when it's down. But I know it's there. And I'm kind of scared next time when I go in, even with a 20 volume that isn't as nearly as strong and damaging, I'm kind of scared because, yeah, there are some areas that'll do fine, and then there are areas that are over-processed, I think, that don't need. There are areas that I got, they are up high enough and I think that's the point where a professional would foil your shit to protect and just foil the hairs that need the new bleach and leave the other ones alone so they don't fry or overprocess. And that's why it's complicated. And that's why it takes so much time. And that's why it's expensive, you know. But at home, we just kind of have to go, well, fuck it. I know I need to do it again. And, you know, hope it don't hurt those other hairs too bad is what it is problem areas all right when i started the process my hair was all brown natural brown growth had not been touched processed nothing for two years but my ends were blonde already they were old blonde 
from two years ago. See how white they are? I wasn't supposed to get the new bleach on that old bleach. It didn't need it. But it got on there. And that is why they are so fucking white. Okay? They survived, but it wasn't good for them. Damn sure don't need to get them on there a third time. Next time. Second time. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so I can immediately see that problem, of course. And in certain lighting, you can see me from a mile away. That I've got really white ends and a darker blonde throughout. So that's a problem for me. Um, what else? Um... Okay, and I've pointed out how the back didn't lift as much because I didn't start in the back. So I have those problem areas back there that really need to be bleached again. You know, and I guess when I do it the second time with the 20 volume, I could try to just focus on the problem areas and leave the rest of the hair alone. Just pick out strips that I think really need to be brought up and leave everything else alone. I don't know. But anyway, so these are major problem areas that I can see. Overall, it's bearable. I can live with it, you know, until I can do better. I would love to be able to pull it up in a ponytail. And it's always that way. Even if I go to a professional, it was always that way. Even with my girl who was doing my hair and she was such a professional and so good. You're still in shock when you have very dark hair and you have to get used to this. I don't care who does it or what. It's just, it takes getting used to. You're shocked when you look at it and it looks kind of, un I'm sorry y'all, this heat is just too much. My God, how did it go up that high? Um, it takes some getting used to, and within a few washes, though, it typically will mellow out, and you'll get very used to it, and it's fine. But y'all know what I'm saying? And so, I always felt that way, even when I went to my hair girl, that when I was trying to pull it up. Huh, why, why, when I put the camera here, does my face look so red? I know my face ain't that red. Let me go in the bathroom and see. Mm -mm. It's not that red. But the heat kicked on, y'all. And I don't know how the hell it happened or how the hell it got way up in the 80s, but it is way, way too hot in here. So anyway, but yeah, I can walk around in different lighting and let you guys see a little better what I'm talking about. See that? Mm-hmm. In different lighting, it looks different. Let me go outside. That's the best natural lighting. But I was decently successful with my toner and getting the most hideous of, of tones out of it. Well, you know, I want to be honest. I don't want to mislead anybody. But some of this will wash down and mellow out. But yeah, it does have some weird tones still running through it. So. But I'm not that shitty brown gray anymore. And I'm happy about that. Oof, I'm going to get some air running up in here. Hot. But yeah, so that's it as far as my hair situation and what I did to it. And I uh, guess I might as well just show y'all real quick. That's because I don't know when I'll make another video about this. Maybe the second time I go back in. I'll try to make a video when I go back in and do it again. I'm not going to do all the stuff if some of those girls do, though. they have. I just don't have time to do that. I would love to, but... You know, my hair, it's not a hair channel. Some girls will sit there the whole time they're doing it and they'll start filming it and shoot, I'm scared. I would mess my hair up trying to do all that. But anyway, this is what I use. This is my bleach. Wella. Worked very well for me. And uh, yeah, you know, you get your little measuring bowl and your little brush 
and uh, what is going on here? Let's see, developers, you know, just the basic 30, and I have my 20, and I showed y'all the, the toners, just basic stuff, you know, gloves and the, the mask. Um, I think I've already thrown that out because I used it all. But I bought a decent mask to put on it. Um, I showed you guys the booster, the protector that you put into your bleach that helps strengthen your hair while you're doing that. I pretty much showed y'all everything. It's just a quick little chitty chat version. But yeah, I'm okay with the results for now. But yeah, I, I do... I do know there are some problem areas, so I wanted to go ahead and point out that and what I know is a problem. And for now, though, I'm just going to have to get used to it, deal with it, and within a couple weeks. Now, I want to talk about the root for a minute. It is a little white around the roots. That's I don't think that's like necessarily like through here it looks okay to me. It doesn't look too white or burnt or like hot roots, what they call hot roots. To me, it doesn't. Okay, now maybe to a professional in certain parts of it, it might look like that. It's where you get this result, like all up in your root, where it that is so white at the root and then orangey or darker throughout the rest of the hair. You don't want that. You know, but a little bit of white around the root. Um... It's okay, I guess. Um, it's not anything that looks too abnormal to me. Because I was really careful to be mindful of staying away from the scalp until later, until the end. And then using a less strong developer. So yeah, I'm okay with it. In certain lighting. In certain lighting, I'm okay with the tone, the shade, all of that. But, I mean, in certain spots. But, I also know there's those funky-ass problem areas, too. And so, anyway, alright. I guess that's pretty much it. I do plan, like I say, different people say different things. I know people go in and bleach it. it they'll bleach it the first time and then turn around an hour and do it again the same day. Bleach, bleach, bleach. I know there are people that bleach it three or four times in one day. There's all this shit on the internet. Um, Brad Mondo reacts to these people doing these different things. Some people's hair can take it. If you're willing to take that chance, that's on you. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, I guess it'd probably be okay if I waited one or two days to let the oil build back up in my hair and the cutest cool, the cuticle clothes. I'm sorry. I was looking at this beautiful cardinal. that just blew up. It's so beautiful. You know, just to give it a resting period. I'm sure it'd probably be okay in a couple days. Go back in and do it again. But my hairdresser always had me wait one week. It was the same thing when I was going to a professional. Now, some professionals, I've been to folks back in my early days, my teens and twenties who would bleach the fuck out of my out of my scalp and they didn't give a two shits and they were probably using 40 volume developer which it goes in fast and cooks it and you just don't have the same integrity on your hair and they would keep me processing a lot longer they would bleach the fuck and i remember it burning okay the girl i had for 20 years did not do it like that she, again, cared very much about the integrity of the hair. And she would always let me know, hey, you know, if you come in here with long root, the longer it's going to be a process to get you back how you how you like it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in one chair, one sitting. But over the next two to three, four visits, we will get you there. And I understood that. And she could only take me up so many shades in one sitting. And then tone that out nicely. So there would be certain visits that I would be, you know, I would have to deal with a certain shade of blonde in the meantime for a couple, three weeks or a week or however long, you know, she wanted me to wait or until I could get back in. And then by that next visit or two, she could take me up more and tone that out. 
and then take me up more and tone that out. And you know, it, it, for my hair, it is a process getting there. So that's where a lot of people get upset with dark hair. They think it's supposed to, you know, a lot of times we want instant gratification and it's supposed to be fucking go from this to this result overnight, like instantly, like now, right after I put this on my hair, it's going to be this beautiful, perfect shade. And a lot of times it's just not that it's too hard to go from where you're at to that. And it is a process. Okay. That takes time and patience and proper hair care. And yeah. Um, but you know, depending on how dark your hair is, you can get it up pretty bright in one sitting. If you learn proper techniques, take your time, really put the good effort and, and patience into it. And, you know, don't get in a hurry and get sloppy and you can get it up pretty damn bright in one, one day, one lightning and toned out, you know, to where it's at least bearable for you to have to wait. Now, my hairdresser would typically have me wait one week. She wouldn't have me come back in two days or overnight. No, not that fast. She would typically go with one week. If, you know, say it were to come out, you know, whatever. Like I'm in this process now where I've got these trouble spots. She would tell me to come back in a week. So basically that's what I'm doing. I'm, I did my hair yesterday and I'm going to wait one week. I really don't want to though. I have the extra bleach. I have the extra product right now. I want to go and get myself one more toner because I'm out of toner and I want to do it now. Like a day later. I want to go back in on it right now. And I want to get this shit up. I want to get it all, all of it up to level 10. Up to one more even shade is what I'm saying. But <laughs> I'm scared to do that. And I really think I need to wait it out for at least a week and let my hair rest and let my scalp heal. Let my hair get some natural oil built up and then go back in on it with a 20 volume and low and slow and let me see if I can get these problem areas up but I'm gonna have to study up again too because I'm a little confused like okay you know what about these roots do I need to stay away from that or um and then I'm worried about toner and okay whatever I come out at can I mix the toner right again and it's just a lot of work y'all it's a lot of work and a lot of thought into it but it'll be all right okay i will see y'all in the next video